Well, back in 2010, the Indigenous Drivers Race was just one of a number of novelty races on the Fishers Goes program, which Club and Angle conducted on a Sunday well, over the past 13 years. That particular race has grown in stature and importance, and come September, it will be part of the world stage of racing here at Club and Angle. Eureka Night, I caught up with General Manager of Racing, Mr David Watson, to have a chat about the JC Caffron Plate, the Eureka, and a few other things concerning racing. Well, David, once again, we're rapidly approaching the running of the JC Caffron Plate, and once again, Kari playing a very important part in the staging of this race. Yeah, really important to have their support. Kari's a great supporter of sport in general in New South Wales. We're just very privileged to have them on board as being a sponsor of this race series, which has grown and grown over the last 12 or 13 years to become what it is today. And the importance, David, is that now it's going to be featuring on the Eureka card. Yeah, it's a great incentive. So this year, the race has generally been on a feature night, but we've actually pinpointed that we want this race to be on part of the Eureka program, the world's richest harness race at 2.1 million. And to kick off that great night racing, there's going to be the JC Caffin Plate, which culminates after a series of heats that are going to be conducted throughout the state. Um, there will be two heats conducted at uh, the first lot is at Young uh, on July 18. Then we head to Parks for two heats, I think on August 4. And then we head off to Newcastle on August 11. There'll be a couple of heats. So the heat winners will gain a start in the JC Caffin Plate, which will be conducted here on Eureka Night on September 2. There'll be a point score for the balance of the field. And of course, the reigning winner, Michaela Barnes, whose name appears on the honour roll three times. Uh, as being last year's winner, she'll also have an invite to the race. Yeah, Michaela's still smiling after her first winner as a trainer here at Club and Ale a couple of weeks ago. You just can't want that smile. And, and what a wonderful job she has done. Yeah, it was great to see. They were pretty excited, weren't they, that night? Like herself and her mum and a couple of friends. Um, they really enjoyed that moment. And I'm sure she's... I spoke to her tonight. She's really keen to be part of the series again. And, yeah, it's going to be just another great part of that evening that we're going to have here on the TAB Eureka Night. And David, isn't it great we're going back to be able to run the heats at various country centres? Yeah, look, it's had a couple of tough years with COVID and that it really restricted what the series, so they were straight out finals there for a couple of years. But we got the heats going again last year and it's great to see the support of Harness Racing New South Wales and the clubs. They're really keen to be part of it. So I know Paul Ralph gets to a few of the heats if he can from Kari. Um, we have uh, representatives from the club that'll get to the where the heats are and the clubs are really supportive too they do their own little things there'll be a really big uh, emphasis with the welcome to country here on eureka night and being the first race um it's, as i said it's a lot of a lot of businesses put events on i, I think sometimes maybe as token gestures this has really grabbed the fabric of of what um, the indigenous culture and all that's about here at club menangle and you know, it's, a, it's a pretty big event when we have the Welcome to Country. We have the smoking ceremonies and Uncle Ivan's here and there's uh, all the friends and families come out. So you can imagine like they're doing that when we have you know, maybe 1,000 or 1,500 people here. We're looking that night to have 10 or 12, 15,000 people here. So I'm sure it's going to be uh, a pretty impressive sight for all these people to appreciate. They we should also point out the fact that it is now an award-winning event, not just the race, but also these wonderful exhibitions we have here with the Indigenous theme. Yeah, look, it's its its, its own a special event. We're just making it even... We're emphasising it even more here with the Eureka. Um, we're pretty proud of it too. I know Michael Brown, John Dumasy, started the process with it. it. was I think they were just all sitting around having a having a, a meal one day and Jimmy Brown and you know it was let's let's try this um, did we think it end up being as big as it has no but it's great that it is I think it's about its 14th year this year it gets better every year so that, I think that's it's pretty special in itself it started out as having a bit of fun but over the years in particular the last three or four it's serious look it did. It was part of it. The first running was actually the first couple of years they were, when I say novelty events, they were real races, but there was the Heffalump, there was the Mighty Mouse, so it was for big horses, small horses, trainers that never had a winner here. There was all those sort of events. There was the local yokels. Um, but this got its own momentum, this got its own identity. Um, 
and I know Paul Ralph's really proud of it. We, we've mentioned about being part of NADOC week and stuff like that, and he said, no, I don't want you to be. He said, this is its own event. It, I don't want it to be part of that. He said, I love what it's become. Um, and, and Kari and Paul Ralph and, and those supporters look forward to the couple of weeks of this series. Yeah, it's its own identity, and talking about own identities, the ambassador for Eureka Night, Charles Oliveri, the UFC champ. Yeah, it's amazing. The feedback we've got so far has been fantastic. I know there was an interview done there where they went through some of the trainers and drivers in the stables, and a few of them haven't heard of him. They're pretty busy themselves. But it's what it can bring, and it's already opened up a lot of doors for us. Like people, I just know from talking to some of the NRL players, they're just like, yeah, wanna, how'd you get this guy there? And like, I know it's not, I know it's um, some bloodstock and Aaron Bain have been huge and enticing here and Harness Racing Australia are right supportive of it. It's opened a lot of other avenues and like it becomes mainstream news now. So it's going to bring a real good spotlight. I look forward to the match race. Not just a match race where it's a dual sulky. No, he'll be out there for want of a better word, fighting uh, to try and beat Luke McCarthy. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing Aaron Bain and Summer Bloodstock have done. And I know Jack Trainer and Brad Abbott, they're mad UFC fans. They're absolutely delighted and ticking off the days until September the 2nd. Well, hey, it's just not the boys. I, I know Lizzie Heath's really excited. Um, she's a Charles Oliveri fan, so it's that 25 to 40 demographic that we're looking to entice here. There's going to be a lot of other um, headline acts that will be announced in the coming weeks that we should have here on the night. So it's just not that. It's Of course, it's all about the race, but there's going to be a lot of headline acts that we're really excited about that we can announce over the next few weeks in the build-up to that race on September 2. Well, those headline acts, David, we can announce now because uh, Charles has agreed to go head-to-head -head with a special bout on the night with the uh, general manager of racing here at Clubman Angle. How do you think you'll go? Yeah, no, it's... Um, it is, isn't that true? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no truth at all. No truth at all. No, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? I, I, I think I'd be really fit. I'd have to get fit. I'd just be running around the ring trying to avoid him. That's part of it. It's an octagon, isn't it? Circle. So I can just keep running around in circles. Tire, I'd tire him out. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Jared Croker celebrated 300 games for his beloved Canberra Raiders, the green machine, on Friday night, David. No luck in that particular game, but he did enjoy success here at Clubman Angle as an owner with Anna Love. Oh, he, he always enjoys success here at Menangle. Um, I sent him a message earlier just with question marks. Where, where's the winning owner's room? Like, we love having him in there. So, no, he's um, Brad Hewitt. Does, Brad Hewitt's a really good trainer. Um, got some really nice horses, very strong stable. And to have Jared Croker part of that, yeah, it's great when he brings his team here. Jared brings all his mates up. It's great to have him. It's a good atmosphere, um, good group of owners, and I wish him all the best. So we're about to see the retirement in a few days' time of someone who's worked at Club Angle and Bulleye Harness Racing Club for many, many years, a very dear friend of yours. Yeah, Donna's, um, I wish she didn't, I wish she wasn't, but it happens to us all. She's um, got a great offer where she's gonna have a change of lifestyle, but Donna's been in excess of 20, 25 years at Bulleye initially, and here, uh, yeah, they, the staff like that are really hard to find, and. It's a real soft spot we've all got for Donna, and it'll be a really sad day, the day she finally, I don't know, it's not hanging up the binoculars, but hangs up the computer, um, being assistant judge. You just can't find people like that anymore. It's really hard to find people like that anymore. Just the integrity, um, her reliability, and detail to a job. Uh, I know she's um, looked upon uh, very favourably by Harness Racing New South Wales as well, the job she's done. So it'll be a sad day for all of us because she is part of the culture here. She's been here since the, f the first race meeting. So it'll be sad when she goes, but I'm sure it'll um, be a great night and we'll make sure it's celebrated. Yeah, very professional in everything she does. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, she's been here nearly as long as you, so that's a long time. No one's been here as long as me, <laughs> I can guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all get that way, don't we? Dave, great to catch up with you. And uh, as we move forward towards Eureka Night, which everyone's starting to tick off the days until we do, we'll catch up with some more information and uh, keep training. Yeah, we, yeah I'll, I'll keep running those circles. Thanks, mate.